On the 12th of April, at the Saints Islands, Rodney attacked. Conditions were actually quite similar to those today. The wind was very changeable and kept moving direction. But this gave Rodney one key advantage. His fleet was copper-bottomed and much quicker and more manoeuvrable, particularly in these light breeze conditions. The French general, Antoine de Bougainville, the man who'd raced Captain Cook across the Pacific, was now serving with de Grasse's fleet. He was stunned by the speed and agility of the British ships. Bougainville described the British advantage. He said the French ships were like tortoises chasing British stags. One British midshipman who fought at the Saints said that we knocked the French fleet to atoms. It was, he said, the best day Old England ever saw. After 11 hours of fighting, the French surrendered. Their admiral, Comte de Grasse, conceded that his navy was operating a full century behind the British. Rodney had saved Jamaica and her precious sugar trade, the keystone of the British economy. In the Jamaican capital, Kingston, a giant marble statue was erected in his honour. And here on the side, there's some fantastic detail. Britannia here in the middle with her Union flag on the shield. And at the very bottom, Britannia is trampling on the French flag. You can see here the fleur de lis, symbol of the French monarchy. It's fascinating to think what would have happened if de Grasse had won that battle. Perhaps his statue would be up there now looking down on me. Britain would almost certainly have lost her sugar islands and all the trade with them that was such a mainstay of her economy. But even more important than that, confidence, the great elixir of the capitalist system, would have dried up. The stock market would have collapsed and with it, the government. Britain would have been no better than a third-rate power. Rodney's aggression was widely credited as the reason for the preservation of Britain's Caribbean empire. But he had an even greater...